Today, I'm excited to share something with you that I think is really exciting. And that's what the elitist in me calls real math. Yes, proof and derivation. And today, we're going to derive the formula for geometric series. Let's have a look. First, we must discuss the key to proofs and derivations, because up until this point, you haven't done a lot of it. And memorizing proofs can be difficult and time consuming, and you might get a little bit frustrated with the process. So I'm going to give you some hints and tips to actually get those proofs down. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to read that proof until you look like this guy and then not look like this guy because hopefully you are going to end up understanding it. So you're going to read through it until you understand it. Not just the final result, but each and every step along the way. Then you are going to look for the trick, the magic moment in the proof that makes you go, aha, I see what you did there. That was really clever. And that's the sort of thing that can actually make you think that math is really beautiful. And then you're going to write down the key steps, and then you're going to practice writing the proof with the assistance of those key steps. And then you're going to practice writing the proof without the assistance of those key steps. And then you're going to practice writing the proof once a day for the following few days so that you can actually get that thing stuck in your head. And then you will find that the proof may well be in the pudding. Let's derive the formula for the sum of a geometric sequence. So we know that the sum of the first n terms of a sequence is equal to t1 plus t2 plus t3 all the way up until tn. And because it's a geometric sequence, we know that each term can be expressed as tn is equal to ar to the n minus 1. So term 1 is ar to the 1 minus 1, which is ar to the 0. Term 2 is ar to the 2 minus 1, which is ar to the 1. So we're going to substitute that in for each of the terms that we're adding up. And it becomes then sn equals ar to the 0 plus ar to the 1 plus ar squared, etc, etc. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take that very same thing, rewrite it, but multiply it by r. And when we do that, we get rsn, and ar to the 0 becomes ar to the 1. ar squared becomes ar cubed, etc., etc. So we just add 1 to the exponent of r when we multiply it by r. So then what do we do? Well, we're going to do that little tricky thing that sometimes looks beautiful in math. We're just going to take each of those terms and we're going to scooch it over a little bit to the right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract. Now, because we've scooched those terms over, we actually see that the same term is duplicated several times in each of those two things. So we get ar to the 1 at the top and ar to the 1 at the bottom. ar squared at the top, ar squared at the bottom. So when we subtract, we find that all of these terms end up cancelling out. And all that you're going to have left is rsn at the top and ar to the n at the top. And at the bottom, you'll have sn and ar to the 0. So the expression becomes rsn minus sn is equal to minus ar to the 0 plus ar to the power of n. And now all we have to do is play a few algebraic games in order to isolate sn. So we've got the rsn minus sn is equal to minus ar to the 0 plus ar to the power of n. So first, we're going to take out common factors on either side. So on the left, we take out a common factor of sn, because that's the thing that we actually want by itself. We're trying to isolate that term, the sn. And on the right, we can take out a common factor of a, which we know is the first term in any sequence. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bracket next to the a there, the minus 1 plus r to the n, and I'm just going to rearrange it and call it r to the n minus 1, because I think it looks a bit better, and for you it might look a little bit more familiar. 
then all we do is we divide both sides by r minus 1. And when we do that, we actually find that we get that formula that we've been looking for. So then we get Sn is equal to A times R to the N minus 1 divided by R minus 1. And there's a little caveat there, R cannot be equal to 1. Because if it is, you will be dividing by 0. And that's illegal and unethical. Or, you know, in simpler terms, it's just undefined in math. We, we don't know how it works. So, let's, let's summarize what we've just learned. The trick to this proof, that magical thing that you remember that makes you go, aha, this is beautiful, I love math, etc. That is to multiply the series by r, which is the common ratio, and then subtract the series from itself. Then the steps that you must remember is to write out Sn. Then multiply all the terms by r, Subtract Sn from Rsn, that's the magic little trick that you remember there, and then you're going to solve the resulting equation for Sn. So that was my little exciting thing I wanted to share with you, and I like to call it real math. But, you know, there are other parts to math that are real, uh, essentially getting it right. So if you want to keep it real and get your math right, get practicing.